Uh, my name is Dr. Ravindra Mehta and I am the Chief of uh, Chest Medicine, Critical Care and Sleep Disorders Medicine in Apollo Hospital, Jayanagar with commensurate qualifications to justify all these specialties. Yeah. So sleep and routine checkups in healthcare is an increasing importance topic which is being discussed primarily because sleep cuts through all specialties of medicine. So as a part of screening, it becomes important so as to maintain health because prevention is everything in medicine now. And as a part of focused assessment, if there is a particular issue in any specialty, it's quite important to see its impact on sleep, not only from the point of view of primary assessment, from the point of view of disturbing sleep, which will make it into some sort of a cycle which needs to be interrupted. And lastly, to see the impact of treatment, which improves not only the condition, but the overall health of the person of which sleep is a very integral part. So this is talked of more and more where in every area of impairment, whether it's heart, lungs, rheumatology, diabetes and so on, a routine sleep evaluation as a standalone topic and an integrative topic needs to be factored in. This is a very burning issue in healthcare right now. So sleep disorders are very interesting. Fundamentally, you would think that sleep is such an important part of our life. It forms one third to one fourth of our existence and we should be looking at it very carefully. It was talked of in the late 1960s, but it has taken the maximum time to gain uh, awareness, importance and recognition. So at this point, when we talk of the challenges we face, one, it is based on awareness, knowing that it is important, though we, it's there in the back of my mind bringing it to the forefront of all contacts with both prevention and therapeutic aspects of healthcare and as any issue comes up disseminating it to both providers and the lay people and of course the other people who help in the whole process such as industry policy makers and so on. So we have a major challenge when it comes to awareness, recognition, bringing it to your questionnaire, to your bedside, to the policy makers, to the people who are trying to prepare solutions and cures for it and put that into perspective which both leads to a, a, a better understanding, better evaluation and leads to better outcomes in healthcare. This is something which is increasing now. Fortunately, in the last decade or so, things are improving. But we have only covered the tip of the iceberg. We still have a long way to go. So guidelines typically, as the word suggests, came more from the Western world. Typically, you know, it is, you know, think globally, act locally. So Western guidelines were excellent to look at because they formed, they were the conglomeration of many years of research which was done over there. But when we realize that we have to extrapolate to our 1.25 billion population, you have to understand that we have to uniquely look at our problems. How are people look at sleep? How are they willing to come out with it? Do they recognize it as a problem or it's just supposed to be something which is brushed under the carpet and we deal with it? And when it comes to providers, do we as providers realize it? Do the, the surrounding services realize it? And are we in a position to do something? Guidelines in India have lagged behind because of lack of primary research done in the country. One of the few guidelines which exist in sleep medicine is what's called the Indian OSA or in OSA guidelines formulated in 2014 led by AIMS and ICMR which we were also a part of when we wrote the treatment aspects. That has talked of an entity called obstructive sleep apnea or OSA and put down guidelines based on literature available till 2014. After that, there's no major guidelines in sleep medicine and we are left with integrating what knowledge we can get from the West with whatever available data is available here with experience and trying to put that towards forming some sort of good therapeutic uh, options for our patients. But a lot of work needs to be done in this area, which is always an opportunity. As we say, if something is not defined well, it is an opportunity to do it better. And I think sleep medicine and guidelines personifies this to the maximum. So an exciting field is in much in which not much work has been done which and it is a big problem and it is a common problem. When you meet these three criteria, certainly there you are in a position to do new and new stuff. So the biggest guidelines in the biggest breakthroughs in this field have been slow truthfully. And again, it goes back to no awareness, no recognition and not enough implementation. What is out there which excites us right now? Well, the commonest sleep disorder in which is seen in practice is obstructive sleep apnea from a therapeutic point of view. And there this whole generation of treatment devices which include positive pressure devices, surgery and oral appliances has really come up. The juggernaut of technology has been unleashed into this field also and we have better sleep apnea devices, we have better recognition softwares and, 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 and uh, tools 
So we have better therapeutic options. We have better surgical options which have come out. And in the last three to four years, something new came, which is a particular nerve stimulation device, a technical thing to try and improve sleep apnea. Still to hit our country, but it's there. All in all, sleep apnea treatment has been really taken to a very high level. Uh, the devices are smaller, more comfortable, and with greater awareness, it is permeating to a large uh, segment of our population. Another very common thing is insomnia. In fact, the most common sleep disorder overall worldwide is transient insomnia. And in the fields of insomnia, a lot of recognition has come to understanding that let us not hide this entity, let us talk about it. And the breakthroughs have been in recognition, educating people, forming comprehensive plans, not only on drug fronts, but also on behavioral approaches and trying to address this problem uh, where it existed in a very large platform before.